That'd be great. All right. Sir, you've had an opportunity to consult. Yes, ma'am. Uh, just for the record, uh, I'm a Moorish American Aboriginal Indigenous man. Hold on, I'm going to write this down. I'm a Moorish, Moorish American Aboriginal Indigenous man. You're talking too fast. Moorish American Aboriginal, Aboriginal Indigenous Sovereign Man. Okay? And as far as jurisdiction, man, according to case law, federal Supreme Court statutes, there's no discretion to ignore lack of jurisdiction. See, Sir, Montana? I'm going to interrupt you because I'm going to repeat once again. We haven't even gotten to the issue of jurisdiction yet. The issue is whether you are going to appear in this courtroom with an attorney or without an attorney. Simply that small issue. I understand. I understand. After concern, we decide yeah. that issue, we will then move on to the issue of whether this court has jurisdiction over you, whether the charges are against you, all of those things. But understand, for today, I just I, must, I just must say, man, uh, to add on to what you're saying, jurisdiction, for the record, can be challenged at any time. See, Lantana versus Hopper. I'm ju raising jurisdiction now, man, asserting my constitutional right, and jurisdiction hasn't been proven. I haven't even had a rebuttal from the uh, from the prosecutor, man. There hasn't even been a rebuttal. I, the judge is not supposed to be the arbitrator. I haven't had a rebuttal once from the prosecutor. I can prosecutor. assure you, I am not an arbitrator. Understand? I've given. We, we. I've sent plenty of documentation, asking for the returning of the documentation that the prosecutor uh, office holds in regards to the fact of my identity and it proving that the state has no jurisdiction. And jurisdiction again can be challenged at any time. See Lantana versus Hopper. Uh, the burden shifts to the courts to prove jurisdiction. See 100 SCT 2502. There is no discretion to ignore lack of jurisdiction. See Rosemont versus Lambert 46 9 F2D 416. So, with that being said, man, can jurisdiction be proven for the record? I'm here on the threat, duress, and coercion. Because I'm here, I'm not here on my own free will other than threat, duress, and coercion. On the uh, bail recognizance sheets that were signed, Brandon Casimir isn't signed to that. That's who originally was charged. If you amend the court records to say and reflect that Brandon Casimir is also known as Cheyenne Kushimir Ill or Cheyenne Matola Kushimir Ill and any and all derivatives, that would be uh, improper and that would be illegal and unlawful because I'm not also known as Brandon Casimir. The documentation that was given to the officer was given when he asked. I gave him authentic documentation from the state of New Jersey. That was authenticated, excuse me, correction, authenticated by the state of New Jersey. That officer had no jurisdiction. He asked where I was traveling. I said Timbuktu. This land is indigenously called Timbuktu. I have the right to assert that right according to Article 6 of the treaty. I'm going to interrupt you. There are some people that believe that this is the state of New Jersey. You may not believe that. But there are people that believe that this is the state of New Jersey. Belief is not reason and facts, man. So because the state of New Jersey gives out authentication documentation on West State Street in Trenton, New Jersey, that's why I know the state of New Jersey to exist that. The state of New Jersey is not the soil of the land. So if anyone thinks that the state of New Jersey is the soil of the land, they are sadly mistaken. Well, I think that there are probably some people that believe that you are sadly mistaken. But that is not the issue today. If you but wish to address the issues of that I have brought before that, no, no. My issue today is are you going to appear with a lawyer or are you going to appear without a lawyer? That is the only issue I, I can't am addressing make an today. I, can only, I am not I, addressing the issue of jurisdiction. The lack, excuse me, ma'am. According, uh, according to the federal case law in the United States Constitution and the United States Supreme Court, and when, that the, when the issue is raised properly before this court, I will it's consider... being raised at any time, man. Excuse me a moment, please. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of talking going on in the courtroom that I can hear. If I can hear it, it is being recorded on our recording system. Two things. I don't think you want people on the recording system to know what you're saying. The second is you're interfering with me. If it continues, I will have to ask you to leave the courtroom. Uh, objection, ma'am. According to Canon 3, 
A judge to the court to every person who is legally interested in a proceeding or that person's lawyer full right to be heard according to law. Asking us to leave the room, man, is I'm not is asking improper. you to leave the room at all. I'm asking people who are speaking so loudly that well, they are interfering my, with my, the proceedings. The, my, you ask me, am I going to proceed with attorneys? This is my society. And my greatest society exists beyond these walls. They have power of attorney, a written agreement contractually. That's a constitutional right for us to be able well, to enter into What do you want agreement. them to do? Who is it actually that holds the power of my attorney? Entire, my entire council. This is my council. And what do you want them to do? The this courtroom According today. According to the constitutional no, no, law. No, no, no. Tell me the actions that you want them to take Hansel. in this courtroom today. Council, I want my society members sitting next to you yes counseling me that is not going to happen sir well that is improper and illegal man it is not uh, according and to when you need to consult with them you simply tell me you can step outside we have a private conference room on the left hand side you can consult with them there according they are the not the going to sit at the conduct. council table with you according to the code of judicial conduct man that's not stipulated in article three uh there are a lot of things that aren't stipulated in article three including the fact that you and I need to consult with one another. We need to be polite to one another. Absolutely, That's not there. Absolutely. So there are a lot of things that aren't there. I'm being polite as, pos as possible, ma'am. I'm not suggesting otherwise. Okay. Sir. And just to add for the record, once more. Is this all for the record? Yes, this okay, is all Okay, then you let me know when you're finished putting it on the record, and then you and I will consider, continue with our discussion. Ma'am, jurisdiction can be challenged at any time. See Lantana versus Hopper. I'm raising the jurisdictional issues right now, ma'am. You're asking me to uh, assert whether or not I will have an attorney at law be representing me. That is impossible, unlawful, and illegal, and that is against your constitutional oath if you force me to get an attorney at law. I've already asserted the fact that jurisdiction can be challenged at any time. Courts must prove on record all jurisdiction facts related to the jurisdiction asserted. We can't proceed uh, until jurisdiction is proven. You finished? Yes, ma'am. Okay. The issue we are going to discuss today, and I'm going to repeat this for the last time. I move time. the court, ma'am, to dismiss this case for lack of jurisdiction. Denied. Jurisdiction can't be challenged at any time, ma'am. Don't repeat yourself four times, please. I listen carefully. I write things down. If you wish to file that sort of an application with the court, it can be filed in writing upon, notice, already been filed, upon notice to everyone involved. The pick. I am not going to repeat myself again. I cannot conduct this proceeding with noise from the front row. If you lady, ma'am, and you gentlemen want to stay here, be quiet. I'm not a gentleman, ma'am. I'm a nobleman, just for the record. If you are a Moorish American, Aboriginal, Indigenous, Sovereign man, whatever you are, be quiet in my courtroom. I cannot do this with people talking in the audience. Can jurisdiction be proved, ma'am? Sir, we are not dealing with the issue. I told you before. You want to raise that issue, you file an appropriate motion. It has been filed, ma'am. No, I haven't seen it yet. I'll deal with it when I see it. If it's All not right. in the appropriate form, it's not going to get dealt with. The issue today is whether you are able to proceed in this proceeding with a lawyer or without a lawyer. I'll be proceeding, ma'am, and appropriate persona to jurors with the right of my society and law firm to consult me. Well, all of that is well and good. The decision I'm going to make today is whether you are going to have an attorney at law who is admitted to practice law in the state of New Jersey or represented you. And that's what we're going to talk about now. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Uh, the, the practice of law cannot be licensed by any state, board versus swear. A, plen a plenary license is not a, a, law, uh, a license to practice law. Now, what's the case that you just cited? Let's just, what's the case you just cited? Board, board versus swear, ma'am. Or swear versus board. Right. Yeah. Did you read that case? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, what is it about? What is it? Why don't you tell me what the case is about? I'm not here to get into subject matter, ma'am. I'm simply stating for the record. Sir, you cannot sit at that table and read part of a sentence out of a United States Supreme Court case and tell me that it means that the practice of law cannot be restricted in any way. Ma'am. It can be you restricted want... for those who are U.S. citizens. I'm not a U.S. citizen. I'm a Morris American indigenous sovereign. I've already stated this for the record. No, in, fact, can be in fact, all that case had to do with I'm whether the state of Georgia could stop someone who 